Can you answer me with a yes or no if my resume is a good match for this job? Nice. Hey, how's it going? So why are we here today and why am I making this video? Well, we all want to build AI assistants powered by large language models to make our lives easier, right? Well, today I'm going to show you how to create a super simple chatbot that acts as a resume expert. It's going to be able to optimize your resume based on a job description and even simulate a full job interview. Now, whether you're looking to get hired or not, remember, this is just an example, but the key here is to explain to you how you could build this AI agent who uses tools and has to jump back and forth between tasks before the cycle ends and it comes up with a final response. Now, don't worry, it's going to be much clearer in a few minutes. So grab a cup of coffee and stick around till the end of the video. Okay, so we're going to be using using Langgraph. And while the docs may seem complicated or some of it doesn't work, trust me, it's actually pretty simple to use. Now, many frameworks are out there that make building agents easy. I've done a few videos on Autogen and Crew AI, which are awesome for multi-agent systems. But today we're going to dive into Langgraph, a lower level framework that gives us more control and flexibility for customizing agent workflows. Now, if you've used AI frameworks before, you're probably familiar with Langchain. The good news is that Langgraph and Langchain work seamlessly together since they're developed developed by the same team. Okay, first things first. So how does Langgraph work? Well, there's a reason why Langgraph has the word graph right there in its name, and that's because it uses a graph structure. Now, to successfully work with Langgraph, you absolutely have to familiarize yourself with what a graph is and its components. So I'm going to keep this short and simple, but we're going to go over the following. Nodes, edges, and states. So what is a node in Langgraph? Well, nodes are made up of computer code or functions that contain logic. They receive information as input, perform whatever computation they have to do, and once they're done, they simply return the result of whatever they did. Typically, nodes represent LLM calls, tool executions, or any other type of processing or logic within your app. As you can see in this diagram, we have two nodes, one and two. Now, obviously, that's a pretty basic structure, but don't underestimate it because you'll see in a few minutes that having just two nodes in a graph could be used for many applications. Also, as you can see, connected nodes make up the graph. Now, what connects these nodes are called edges. Edges determine the flow of execution between nodes. In Langgraph, edges can be simple, conditional, or special. Simple edges directly connect one node to another. The connection can be either unidirectional, one way, where node connects to another but not back, or bidirectional, where both nodes connect with each other in a two-way connection. As you can see in our graph, we have a two-way connection between nodes 1 and 2. Conditional edges use functions to determine the next node based on the current state. In other words, node 1 here uses a conditional edge to determine whether it needs to talk with node 2 or if it can perform whatever it needs to do by itself so that it could end the workflow directly. You'll see how this works when we build our app in a few minutes. Special edges are start and end. These special edges define which node to call first when the graph initializes, that's the start edge, and which nodes must be connected to the end node to terminate the graph execution. Finally, the line graph state. The state is a data structure that is shared between nodes within your graph. It captures the current snapshot of your application and keeps all nodes aware of what's happening within the graph. It's typically defined as a dictionary. Langgraph provides predefined state types, or you could build your own if you need to. You could think of a state as a conversation between two people. When person one says, hi, my name is Jeff, they just added a message to the state. And then when person two replies, hey Jeff, how are you? Person two also added a message to the state. So if person three is also part of the group, they can see what person one and two are talking about because they share the same state. As they keep talking, the state gets bigger with everything they say. It's the same when nodes talk to each other. Now, this example applies if you're keeping track of messages within the state, but again, you could customize or extend the state to include more fields to suit your application needs. Again, this is going to be super clear now because we're going to start to write the code to bring it all to life. But please feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions. I'd love to help. Okay, let's recap. We're going to build a chatbot that can optimize and help fine tune a resume given a job description. And as we've seen before, we're going to do it using just two nodes. Here's what the final graph is going to look like, the expert node and the tools node. And we're going to have a two-way connection between the nodes. 
This means that when the expert needs to respond to a user request, it's going to be able to determine whether it needs a tool or not. So on the one hand, for prompts like optimize the skills in my resume to match the job description, the expert will determine that it doesn't have enough information, so it needs to use the tools node to grab that information from the resume and the job. On the other hand, for prompts like hey, how are you? It's going to obviously be able to respond without going to the tools node. All right, by now, you're pretty comfortable with what's happening. And when we start writing the code, everything's going to make sense. So with that in mind, I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to write some commands to install some packages, set up my environment and add my OpenAI key. So let's do that. Python minus M VN VN. Now this creates a virtual environment called VN. Basically, it's a clean space where we can install packages without affecting other projects. Next, we create our project files. I'm going to run touch agent.py and this file is going to hold most of the app logic, including all the lang graph code. Then I'm going to do touch tools.py. Oops. Hi. Next, I'm going to create a directory for our modules. Make directory modules. Let's see the inside. I'm going to create two files. The first one is going to be called resume.py, and this will include mock data for a resume. And the second file is going to be called job.py, and this file will include mock data for a job description. To keep things simple, we'll return a pydantic object with the formatted data. However, in a real scenario, you'd probably need to get the resume data from a PDF or scrape a job description from a URL or even have the user enter the information manually. But for now, let's assume the data is already available and structured. If you need more info on extracting and organizing data using large language models, check out my other videos or go to gettingstarted.ai. I have so many material covered in detail over there. We need to create one more file to store our OpenAI key and other app variables. In our case, it's just going to be the OpenAI key. But if you add more variables later, this is the place for them. So to do that, we're going to go back and then touch. All right. First, I'm going to activate the environment. So I'm going to do source VN bin activate hip install python.env and langchain langchain OpenAI and then then we're going to do lang chain community. And finally, I'm going to do lang graph. Hit run. That's going to take a few minutes. And once it's done, we're just going to confirm that everything was set up properly and jump to VS Code. All right, let's get into coding. First, we're going to set up resume.py. Now, I'm going to copy paste some code that I have. You can find this exact code on my blog. The link is in the description. Again, it's getting started.ai. Make sure to become a member. It's free, so you don't have to write everything from scratch. All right, so I'm going to do paste and here's what's happening in this file. Essentially, the resume class holds all the resume data, things like your name, professional summary, experience, education and skills. Now, each piece of information is structured using pydantic models like work experience and education, as you can see here. We also have a mock method, this one, which is basically fake data that we're going to use to simulate a real resume within the app. So this file gives us a structured way to handle resume data. Now, in the real world, you're probably going to be loading this information from a PDF file. That's it for resume.py. Next, we're going to do job.py. It's pretty much the same thing here. I'm going to go to job.py, paste the code, and you can find it on the blog as well. Just like resume.py, this file uses a pydantic model to structure job description data. It holds information like the job title, company, location, salary, description, etc. We also have the mock method, which is going to return sample job description information whenever we call it. Now we're going to use this mock method and the one from resume.py to build a tools node on the graph. This node is going to retrieve information about the resume and job description. Other nodes on the graph can query this node to access specific details. In production, these tools would most likely pull the information from a SQL database or any other database type or scrape job descriptions from websites. Cool. I hope everything is clear so far because now we're going to jump to agent.py and that's where we're going to create our graph and bring everything together. All right, I'm going to go to agent.py and we're going to start by adding some imports and libraries that we're going to be using. So first I'm going to do and the tool node here is just going to help us wrap our tools into a node within the graph. Now, as I'm adding these imports, some of them might not make a lot of sense. Just stick around for a few minutes. And once we start using them within the code, you're going to see that everything is easy to set up. Okay, now we're going to import and set up our tools. Now these tools will be a separate node within the graph. This node will give other nodes like our expert access to information about the job and the resume. To do that, let's head over to tools.py and set up a couple of functions. So I'm going to do prompt typing import, then let's do a line chain for tools 
import to what I'm going to do from modules, our job. This is going to let us return the mock data that we have. Resume import resume. That's it. I'm going to create two functions. First one, process job. And this one is going to return a job. We're going to do the same thing for resume, process resume. So this is going, this is calling the mock function that we have. Uh, if you remember, so we have the sample data. So it's returning that. Now, sorry, there's a missing parentheses here. Okay, now we're going to set up the actual tools. So I'm going to do tool, get job, field. I want the model to be able to pass a specific field if it needs to. So let's say I just want to return the job title, then get job is just going to return this particular field. If the field is not present, so it's, it's going to be optional, then it's going to return the complete job object title, company, location, description, responsibilities, benefits, type, posted date. Now this should match what we have here. So essentially it does. Okay. Great. Now we're going to do tool get resume and it's going to be exactly the same thing. We just have different fields. So professional summary, work experience, education, skills. If we go here, we can see that these are the fields. So professional summary skills. Okay. Same thing. We get the resume first. And then if there's a field, return it. Otherwise, return the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to save this, jump back to agent. Let's import the tools and bind them to the model. So let's do from tools, import, get job, get resume, and then let's load the environment variables. Then I'm going to set up the large language model and bind the tools. And to do that, we're going to define the tools as tools, get job, get resume. Then we define the large language model, chat, open AI. And we're going to use GPT or O API key. We'll get this from the environment variables, find tools, and we pass in the tools variable. It's like giving the model a list of tools along with instructions on how to use them. When we bind the tools, the model also learns what information or schema each tool needs to work. Now, this is referred to as function calling. Not every model out there supports this, but with OpenAI's GPT, it knows exactly how to use the tools based on the information it needs. All right, so far so good. Now we're gonna set up the first node on the graph, which is the expert node. This node is responsible for creating improvements, suggestions, or handling any task the user needs. It does this by communicating with the other node in the graph, the tools node. I'm gonna start by defining the expert function. So I'm gonna do expert, and I'm gonna pass the state messages state. Remember, every node on the graph has a state. In our case, we're using messages state, which means every message returned from the expert node gets added to the list of messages. Now you could extend or customize your state depending on your application. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the official documentation so you can read more about creating custom states. Okay, so let's do a system message. So system message. And here I'm going to say you are a resume expert. do not make things up. We're going to grab the state, so all the messages, and we're going to invoke the large language model. So I'm going to do LLM.invoke. We're going to pass in the system message and add the messages. So everything. And we're going to return messages response. Again, since we're using the messages state, this is going to append the response to the existing list of messages. And there you go. That's our expert node. Now let's move on to the tools node. And this one is pretty simple. We can just use the tool node helper function that we imported before. And we can do this by defining tool node. And we can say tool node. And we can just pass in the tools, these ones here. Next, let's create the conditional edge function. And this function decides whether the model needs to use the tools node or if the session can end once the final answer is ready. Here's how it works. First, we're going to do should continue and we pass in the state, just state. We're going to return either tools or end. We grab the messages from the state messages and we grab the last message and we check if the last message, essentially what the expert returned, mentions that it requires to use tools. And the way to do that is to do if last message dot tool calls. So if we have tools, this will take us to the tools node. Otherwise, we can just end. This means we have the final answer. We can just go and respond to the user. That's it. Everything we've done so far is just setting up the pieces. And now it's time to create the graph. This is actually the easiest part of the tutorial. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say graph equals state graph. And we pass in our state object. It's going to be messages state in our case. Then we're going to add our nodes. And the first one is the expert node. So I'm going to say graph add node. 
we're going to call it the expert and we pass in the function that we set up earlier next we're going to add the tools node and it's going to be add node tools tool node this is this one here okay next i'm going to add the edges so i'm going to start by saying add edge the start of the graph is the expert so this is the initial node called whenever the graph initializes so i'm going to say start expert then i'm going to add the conditional edge which is going to help the expert determine whether it needs to end or continue and we define this using this function here should continue so let's set it up as an edge i'm going to say add conditional edge so this applies to the expert and the function that's going to help us determine where to go is should continue we can just pass in the function the last edge that we're going to do is connect tools with experts so that whenever the tools are done running, we're going to have to go back to the expert, which is going to determine if we end or go back to the tools. And to do that, I'm just going to say graph at edge tools and then expert. Next, we're going to do check pointer memory saver. And the check pointer is like a save game button for our graphs progress. We're using memory saver to save each step in memory. Basically, we need this to persist the state between each graph runs. Finally, we just have to compile everything. So I'm going to do app graph.compile check pointer check pointer and I'm going to do while true user input. This is just so we can use our application from the terminal. And I'm going to say double arrows here in wait or exit. Let's just give the user a way to exit the application thing. And then we're going to say response app invoke. I'm just passing the user input. It's human message content equals user input config. And you can pass in a thread ID. Again, this is going to persist the state between each run. I think this looks good. App invoke messages we pass in the user input we pass in our config all right i'm just going to print the response messages content okay we can run this so i'm going to go to the terminal i'm pretty sure everything's going to blow up because it never just runs in case there are some issues we're just going to go back fix those and we can see how the application works so let's do that there were a couple of issues but nothing major so the first one is to rename the human messages import here to human message. So there's no S and we're using this one here when we invoke the graph. So I'm going to change this. Hit save. And then there's just another one. It's graph at conditional edges. So here there is an S. I'm just going to do that. Hit save and everything should work. Okay, let's jump over to the terminal and see what we have. Fingers crossed, agent.py. Let's do what is my name. So it's supposed to bring this from the resume. Perfect. This works. And I'm going to do the same thing for the job description. I'm going to say, what is the job about? This works. Now let's do something more complicated. I'm going to say, improve my professional summary to align with the job. So it's bringing in my professional summary from the resume and it's looking at the job description and it's tweaking the text to align it with the job description, just like I asked it to. And as you can see, the response that I have now is actually pretty good. It was able to pull information from my resume and the job description and it kind of meshed them together in a way that makes sense. And if you go through different scenarios, you can ask it to tweak your skills or tweak your experience or you can even ask it to generate some interview questions and you're going to see that just because we have this tools node connected with the expert node the conversation can go back and forth and you can come up with some pretty cool scenarios i really hope that you found this tutorial useful please make sure to subscribe to the channel and become a member on the blog because you're going to get all of the source code for free just want to say thank you for watching and i'll see you soon